Good morning, Ms. Diaz and Ms. Levy. Um, I'm going to be presenting you guys a case study today that I witnessed and assisted with uh, in my first month of my clinical rotation. The case study is an arthrogram that was done on a 90-year-old patient. Um, so an arthrogram, and I will elaborate a little bit more on it, but pretty much an arthrogram is a study of the joints, of the structure and function of the joints. For our patient, it will be his left hip. Our patient today is Christopher Lewis. He's a 90-year-old male born on September 5th of 1931. He suffered a hip fracture on 2002. He fell and fractured his left hip. Uh, due to this, he had to go through surgery. Uh, in surgery, they did screws and rods, and I'll show you guys what that looks like. But ever since then, and even with a successful surgery, he's been experiencing a lot of pain on his hip, uh, on his hip, uh, specifically the joint area. Uh, so let me show you guys. This right here is what the rod looks like. And that right there would be the screw part. There's also a plates with screws that go into the side if needed. Uh, what we're looking at here, this is the femur. That's the greater trochanter. That's the lesser one. Uh, this is the head. And the acetabulum is what it's fitting into. Um, so yeah. That's what it looked like for a patient as well when he had surgery in 2002. That does not stay in there forever. Our patient stated that two months after that surgery, once the healing process was confirmed to be successful, they removed the screws and the rods. So he doesn't have that anymore. Um, so for his pathology, the pathology is synovial, loss of synovial fluid. So synovial fluid is the same as joint fluid is a lubricant fluid basically is what allows us to move without pain without it, it lubricates our bones specifically that are articulating with one another like the hip uh, one which is the head of the femur articulating with the pelvis um synovial fluid helps us move freely without pain and for our patient he's lost synovial fluid and synovial space over the the time and faster after that surgery he's 90 year old year old now so um it's definitely a lot harder for him uh and i want to show you guys what the a normal joint space looks like versus no joint space let me see if i can enlarge this picture yeah okay so right over here you see there is if you can see there's a little bit of like a darker gray area in between the head and the acetabulum that's space that's normal space and there is fluid in there this you see how there's barely any gray area over here there's no space there therefore there's no fluid there it's all been consumed uh, this is deteriorating so it, it, if left untreated it just gets worse and worse um, and that is our pathology it can cause limited range of motion as well okay so for the procedure uh and that's the reason why our patient's here today um nine months prior to this he he's done an arthrogram where they injected him with steroids and and that helped him be for the most part pain free or experience way less pain and be able to move more uh, for eight months He's on his ninth month now because he had to wait for a prescription and the order to be approved. Um, now that he's here, we bring him in on a wheelchair after getting all his medical history and verifying his identity. Uh, we bring him in a wheelchair to the floor of the apartment where we ask him to change into a gown. Uh, once he's changed into the gown, we place him on an anatomical AP position on the table that was set with clean sheets and a clean pillow for him. Uh, we ask him to lay on his back uh, and we put him on the anatomical position basically his hands on, at his side uh, with the palms facing up uh, then we separate his legs about eight inches apart so that we can internally rotate his feet so that basically the toes are kind of pointing at each other and we do that about 15 degrees in that is the 
the AP position that we need for the scout and that the radiologist wants for the rest of the procedure. So basically there will be no other positioning except that. Uh, in order to guarantee that the patient won't move his feet while he's getting an injection done on his hip area, which is dangerous uh, if he moves, we tape his feet and we just ask the patient to stay still and we assist as much as possible with that. Once that's done, the surgery, the radiologist then uh, he finds the access point that basically where he's going to put the thin needle in. Uh, this procedure needs three things. Contrast, local, first local anesthesia, then contrast, then steroid. So uh, for, uh, to find the access point, what the doctor does is he uses a metal pin on the outside of the body and again he only he he's only doing that to see where he's at so he does that referring back and forth to fluoroscopic live imaging so i don't have a video of that but i can show you from here the scalp picture right here you see there's like no space basically you can barely see the head of the femur and differentiate the other part of the pelvis like it's pretty much messed up together so to find the access point he puts a metal pin and he refers back to and forth to fluoroscopic imaging until he gets it on the right spot, which is here. Once he gets it here, he will mark on the patient's body an X. He does that with a surgical sterile pen. He marks an X. And the reason why he does this part right here, and this part right here would be the femur neck on the inferior medial level. So, because it's towards it's not on the lateral side it's on the medial side he can choose the lateral superior level of the neck too um but he's going for the bottom one and the reason why it's very specific is because if he were to not choose a point and I, he could accidentally penetrate or hit um an iliac tendon or a femur vessel and that can be extremely dangerous that can be vital to the patient so that's why uh, he takes his time to find the correct access point. Like I said, where the once that's done, the the doctor then uses uh, his surgical white gloves, and, and he's not touching anything but this the, everything that's on the surgical tray. Um, and on the surgical tray, he's gonna find a blue drape. That blue drape, he cuts a hole into it, a small hole like this. And the reason he does that is he puts that after he cleans the access point, basically the, the point that he marked with the X where he's going to access, he cleans it with um, betadine. That's like hydrogen, hydrogen peroxide and it's, uh, it, it sterilizes the skin for surgery. It's like a reddish color. He uses his sponges, scrubs that area really well. Once it's sterilized, that's when he puts that blue drape over that site and that hole that he cut into is for the access point basically everything on that area is covered with the sterile blue drape except the access point obviously because he needs to go in there once he's done that um he's going to use a long thin needle and i will show you guys what that looks like <laughs> on video Alrighty, so right here, I'm not sure if you guys can see, but that's the needle right there. And like you see, he's trying to get to the inferior medial side of the neck right there. I don't know if you guys can see it moving a little bit. Um, he finds that side after... First, like I said, the there's betadine to clean that access point, and then local anesthesia as well to numb it out. Once that's done, and he finds the correct site, and he knows that the needle, again, referring back to fluoroscopic imaging, he knows that the needle is in the spot that he wants it, he's going to inject contrast. And I'll show you guys. I took this videos from the procedure with the permission of the radiologist and the tech involved all right so you can see he's like those are the surgeon's hands he's trying to you know accommodate and redirect his needle 
once he's on the right spot you see he stops with the fluoro imaging because he knows he's in the right spot at this point he's attaching um for the contrast he's gonna start injecting the contrast soon So right there, you see the other tube, that's what he attached. And you see how the contrast is spreading? Instead of staying around the needle, it's spreading. I don't know if you can see that lively right there on the video good, but the contrast is spreading. Uh, that is a suggestion of a good injection. And look at what that looks like. You see all that white now? That's inverse, that's the contrast. That's not air, that's contrast. Um, so the reason he knows that the injection went well it's because instead of the contrast staying right around the needle, it spreads all over the joint surface area. And uh, that means that's good, it went well. After he injects the contrast, um, he's going to inject now the steroids. And the steroids is the combination of, and I'll show you guys over here. This is the contrast. And this is what this is basically the local anesthesia, and this depot right here is what they use for steroid. Like basically, that's the pain management factor. That's what helps with the pain for those uh, that long period of time. After those three things have been injected, the doctor's pretty much done. So he will clean, reclean the site for the patient after he removes the needle, and then he will tape that site. We slowly helped the patient up, we grabbed his head, we sat him up before we let him try to stand up or anything. We sat him up for a couple minutes, make sure he's not dizzy and he's good. Uh, then we helped him, you know, get uh, clothed again, like uh, with his clothes, put his clothes back on. And then we wheeled him back to the waiting area outside the floor of the apartment where he'll be checked out. Uh, the instructions that he was given is to take plenty of rest not to move for 24 hours because even though this is for pain management, the procedure itself can be quite painful and it can last that way for up to 24 hours. And if the patient's constantly moving those 24 hours, that's not good. So no plenty of rest, no movement for 24 hours at least. Uh, if the pain continues, he can take over the counter painkillers. If the pain gets worse, for an extended period of time that's not normal and they're recommended to follow up with their primary care doctor uh, for stronger medication and to see what else though after managing the pain the primary care doctor may refer them to physical therapy uh, to get x-rays and stuff like that so as my conclusion we are all born with synovial fluid and joint space and we all lose it as we get older this pathology can also come from different types of arthritis. As I explained, rheumatoid and osteoarthritis are two of the examples. It can be painful and limit mobility. Arthrograms are a great way of not just testing the contents of the joints, but it's, a well, it's as well as a great procedure and a tool to help with pain management around the joints and to lubricate them. Uh, this procedure is non-invasive, uh, non-invasive, and it is a surgical procedure, but it's non-invasive and it does not take that long. I think we were there doing the procedure. Like, it took longer to prep the, the room and the patient and get the medical history than to do the procedure. The procedure itself took the, the doctor no longer than 10 minutes, maybe even less than 10 minutes. Uh, that's all I have for you guys, and thank you.